Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, my friends. This is the Vintage Edmonton Music Podcast, and I am your host, Reverend Clues, and welcome to the podcast. This is number 23 in the podcast hit parade. I hope everybody's doing fantastic out there. It is a miserable day here in Edmonton. It is a beautiful day here up in the, the Recluse compound in the recording room, but outside there is um, torrential rain, high winds, um, flooding everywhere, frogs raining from the sky. It, it is not a very nice day, and then there is a threat that the power could go out at some point, so I wanted to get this out as quickly as I possibly can for all you fine people out there. I wanted to do something a little bit different. I haven't done an email podcast in quite a long time, and again, shockingly, I've gotten a lot of emails uh for the podcast, I'm 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 kind of still stunned by that. So I, I'm working my way through that, and and I really wanted to get a couple emails on the air for this podcast and talk about a couple of tracks again that I need uh, some kind of an ID for. But I'll go into that a little bit later. So I want to get the podcast questions to me first. I'm going to start off with Jeannie from Edmonton. She's asking me the best place in Edmonton to get vinyl. I mentioned this before, I think, in the last email one, so I'm not going to go through it again. But one place I wanted to mention this time around is a place called My Grandma's Attic. It is a thrift store, collectibles kind of a place up in uh, my my side of town, up in North Edmonton, Montfort Road. And it is a great place to find LPs and 45s. They have a little section in the back of the store, and uh, you would almost miss it if you were kind of going through the store, if you didn't kind of hunt like I do to look for things like this. It is a great, great selection of LPs from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, a lot of vintage Edmonton, a lot of vintage Alberta LPs and 45s for very reasonable prices. So go check that out. If you're looking for any kind of vintage Edmonton music or any any kind of vintage Alberta music or any kind of collectibles, it's a really cool place. I would definitely recommend that. So check that out. Thanks for the email, Jeannie. Or Janine, sorry about that. Uh, Let's see. Jake from Brandon is asking me, Brandon, Manitoba, do you accept 45s and LPs? Yes, I do. Um, I try not to accept a lot because a lot of times I might have them. And it again, it has to be vintage Edmonton or at the very, very least vintage central Alberta music that I'm going to play for the podcast. So anything from Manitoba, anything from Saskatchewan, anything from any other place other than that, I don't do just because this is a vintage Edmonton, again, vintage Alberta podcast. So if you have vintage Edmonton, vintage central Alberta, uh, 45s LPs, hit me up. As the kids say, you got my email, rev at vintageedmonton.com, and uh, we'll see what we can do about that. So thank you so much, Jake from Brandon, Manitoba. Samir from Edmonton. This is a great question. What concert by a vintage Edmonton artist would you have loved to have gone to at the time? And again, that is a fantastic question. Boy, I have a lot. Um, I have a soft spot for the 1970s cabaret music scene in Edmonton. And any, literally any artist from that time, I think I would, I would have loved to have been there. I'm going to say a tie between uh, two previous, uh, previous uh, subjects of the podcast. I'm going to say Jack Hennick and also Louis Dimas, also from the 70s, uh, the late 70s time frame. They played a lot in Edmonton. Uh, in different uh, different lounges, different nightclubs here in Edmonton, I would have loved to have seen Louis Dimas in concert. I have a couple of ads on the on the webcast or on the uh, the website vintageedmonton dot com of Louis Dimas with a a um, a New Year's Eve show at the I think it's a New York Steakhouse in nineteen I'm gonna say nineteen seventy nine nineteen eighty ish. That just looks really, really cool. I would have loved to have been on one of those uh, New Year's Eve uh, extravaganzas of uh, of Louis Dimas to check that out. The ring in to the new year. That would have been so much fun to go check out. And also Jack Hennig, who is, uh, again, he was a mainstay in the Edmonton music scene in the late, really from the late 60s all the way up to the early 80s. He played a lot of nightclubs, a lot of lounges, a lot of places like that. And I would have loved to have seen a set 
by Jack Hennig. That would have been the coolest thing in the world. I just kind of hang out there drinking my uh, my malt liquor. <laughs> I drink malt liquor. Sorry about that. Drinking my malt liquor and having my steak and and enjoying the 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 ambience of of of, the, of Jack Hennig and in his band and all that. I would have loved to have seen that. So yeah, those are two right off the top of my head. That's a great question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Let's see. Uh, Kathy from Edmonton is asking me, what type of turntable or stereo do you use to record? Again, that's, an, that's a great question. People have asked me variations on that question since the podcast has started because I'm a big LP and vinyl aficionado. I don't have an incredible setup, shockingly enough. It is a basic uh cobbled together stereo setup that I've gotten from different uh from different thrift stores in Edmonton. I have a uh a Marantz receiver, I've got uh Pioneer speakers. The the turntable I have is an Ion Pure LP uh turntable. It is a USB turntable that I plug directly into the computer so I can do all of my my audio converting into digital. It, it you know, it's not an a truly expensive uh turntable i don't get really crazy as far as my 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 receivers and stuff like that in stereo system it it you know to me it, the whole idea is just the music itself so i i don't go crazy on stuff like that it's not that expensive if you wanted to go out to get a usb turntable to convert all of your vinyl into a um a digital format. So I, you know, I, I think I spent for the entire thing, including the receiver and the turntable. Oh boy. Maybe, maybe a hundred bucks, 150 tops, you know, and that, that, that's probably stretching it a bit. So if you want to do this, if you want to convert your own music, go for it. It is not that expensive. Lots of places, you know, that you can buy this stuff. Uh, Different stores here in Edmonton, uh, on eBay, on Amazon.com. There are a lot of different places you can go to. I'm not going to recommend anything. Uh, go check it out. You know, there are a lot of places, a lot of different brands that you can, uh, that will meet your needs, basically, is what I'm saying. So, yeah, go go check those places out. You can do it yourself. No biggie, as the kids say. So to get to the music portion of the podcast here. I got an email from Mike Brazow about a month ago. Mike is a, uh, a mainstay in the Edmonton music scene. He is a sound man. He is a musician. He he does a lot of things for uh, a lot of people here, just a jack of all trades. And he emailed me that he got a a, a box of uh, reel-to-reel tapes uh, some time ago and was going through them all, and he came up with two songs that he had uh, no knowledge about, vintage Edmonton music songs, uh, obviously, as you'll find out here in a minute, and he wanted to know if I wanted if I wanted the, the sounds, of the songs itself, and I said, absolutely, send them to me, and what they are, it sounds like an A and B side from, I, I'm guessing, the late 60s, early 70s, and I have no title, I have, or I, ha- I have titles, but I have no uh, no uh, artist names or anything like that when they were produced. Again, I, it sounds like a 45, and, and I'm going to throw it out to you once again for all you fine people out there. If you can ID the names of the people who actually did this, I would be so, so grateful. And the names of the songs are called Come With Me, Katie and Klondike Days. Again, this is obviously done in conjunction with the Klondike Days here in Edmonton that uh, was, you know, very, very big in the late 60s, early 70s, going into the 80s. But again, from the, 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 the types of songs, it sounds like it came from the early 70s. Again, I have really no clue other than the songs themselves. So without further ado, and I got an email, by the way, as long as we're talking email, I get an email from a gentleman. I'm not going to mention his name from Sherwood Park, <laughs> who said, "Why do you keep saying without further ado before you before you introduce your songs on the podcast?" And I had no good answer for him. I think it's just you know what I say. So without further ado. <laughs> Without further ado, I'm going to play both sides of the 45 right after the other. And uh, yeah, without further ado, 
The first song is going to be called Come With Me, Katie. And the next song is going to be called Klondike Days. And uh, again, thank you so much to Mike Brazow for sending this to me. I appreciate that. So here they are. Come With Me, Katie, and Klondike Days here on the Vintage Everton Music Podcast. <laughs> A young blade gay with Katie Gray had started going around one day. Then they heard the happy word that gold had just been found for A. As though they had no place to stay, the crowds began to head that way. The young man spoke without delay, and this is what he had to say. Oh. Come with me, Katie, come with me, Katie, come with me, Katie, and we will happy be. And don't mind the cold, dear, just mind the gold, dear, come to the Klondike with me. Let's stop looking, you and I, for a gold mine in the sky, when there's fortune to be found waiting for us on the ground, so won't you come? Katie, come with me, Katie, come with me, Katie, and we will marry me. And when we are old, dear, we'll count our gold, dear, come to the Klondike with me. Oh, let's stop looking, you and I, for a gold mine in the sky, when there's fortune to be found, waiting for us on the ground. So. Trail of 98 Join the rush back to the days Of Yukon Park Get your bowler Tie and vest All your glad gay night is best For it's happy Klondike days In Edmonton Klondike days Klondike days It's the very latest craze And it's bringing loads of luck To everyone Klondike days Klondike Pete on the trail to Easy Street. There's a lucky strike ahead for everyone. Oh, get with it, one and all. Have yourselves a Klondike ball. For it's happy Klondike days in Edmonton. Oh, Klondike days, Klondike days. It's the very latest craze. And it's bringing loads of luck to everyone. Welcome back to the Vintage Edmonton Music Podcast. That was Come With Me, Katie, first, in uh, Klondike Days. And again, as the kids say, if you know anything about that, hit me up. 
at uh, rev at and, and let me know all of the uh, I want to know everything let me know all of the the information as far as that's concerned again I feel it's from the the, the, the early mid 70s you know that that golden age of vintage Edmonton vinyl but I'm not really sure so that's why I needed your help out there in, in, in podcast land so I would be remiss, yes, this is the end of the show, by the way, I would be remiss if I did not mention, and I get an email saying, why do you keep saying I would be remiss at the end of the podcast? Why don't you just say I'm on podcast, I'm on Podomatic, I, you know, all of those different things. I don't know. I, I, I like saying I would be remiss. <laughs> just like I saying without further ado, I kind of like that stuff, you know, that's, that's, uh, a little bit cultured and refined anyway. But anyway, <laughs> I would be remiss if I did not mention I am on indeed on uh, iTunes. You can subscribe to me on iTunes. I am indeed on Podomatic. You can subscribe to me on Podomatic. I am indeed on Google Play Music. You can subscribe to me on Google Play Music. And yes, 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 I am on the TuneIn Radio app. And you should subscribe to me on the TuneIn Radio app. And I got an email, I believe, from Christine asking me if I'm going to be on SoundCloud. Um, maybe. <laughs> I might be on SoundCloud. I'm going to have to check into that. Let me see what I can do. I will have an answer one way or another for you by the next podcast, I promise. So, yes, you can find me in all of those different places. And, again, if you have anything that you want to, uh, to talk to me about or have a submission, you know, go for it. Uh, send it to me at rev at and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, before the flood and the deluge of rain and the... The, the, the horrible wind and the frogs start raining down. I'm going to have to sign out. Until next time, I hope everybody's doing fantastic out there, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>